West Virginia checks off the list. Darian DeVries is the head coach. Mike Casasa, 247, covers West Virginia, joins us on 365 Sports. And it seemed like Mike, and a lot of times, anytime there's a hiring, most of every in reactions are very positive, but it seemed like this one is overwhelmingly a lot of people are thrilled with who they have. Yeah, it's been hard to find. You know, you grab the magnifying glass and you look for the read between the lines about where he came from or where he's going. And what are we missing? Because everybody's the, the newly crowned hero of a program. And this is one that definitely needs the hero, but if on a whole lot of negatives, just because one of the high level at a place that hasn't had a ton of luxuries, he'll have more now. He won't have the most, but all he's known is, is winning. And for the longest time, that was the status of this program. So to get it back on track, you get a guy who's only known uh, life in that lane for a while. So, so far, so good. They won, won the press conference though. Is it, it's locked up. He's bringing his kid, right? Not yet in the portal. Okay. Um, but that seems to be a formality. I don't think he's going to end up going like Creighton. I'd heard that, you know, late on in the regular season of the tournament was that if his dad didn't get like a high major job, it'd be understood. Hey, here's a guy who could be a pro. Um, like will be a pro. Would he be an NBA pro? We'll see. But why not prove yourself in a major conference in the Big East to be a step up? And uh, DeVries certainly knows Creighton from his 20 years there, and he knows Greg McDermott from coaching them for a while. So it seemed like a soft landing spot, you know, low risk, high reward for him. Um, same thing here, except maybe a higher reward because the Big 12 is just that good in basketball. I don't think anybody's going to complain about having a two-time conference player of the year coming into the portal. Uh, probably at a discount, too, when you come to the NIL world, right? Yeah, yeah, no, no okay. doubt about it. Uh, Mike, just uh, how quickly did this all come together, kind of behind the scenes? What was the, the, the workings of, um, you know, this, the staff to, to get this done, uh, Ren Baker and company, and, and how did it all sort of uh, maneuver, knowing that there were other teams that were uh, interested? Yeah, you got to remember they had um, – sorry, I'm walking my dog here trying to get my life back together. Um, they, they've had about nine months, don't forget, to, like, get this together. So they, they paused they paused their search, like, formerly, like, the active part of it in June. But I know I talked to people throughout the season, and they were trying to get their hands on information about Drake and their program. And, you know, that's a private school, so his contract, you can't fool you. So how do you get your hands on that? Well, why are you looking, why are you looking for that? They're trying to figure out more about this coach and what he does and what makes him so good. That was a clue right now. And then, you know, I talked to people at different times who were watching his games live or on tape. Um, that was another clue. So he was certainly one. You know, Dusty May was the guy they wanted to talk to. Mark Byington and JMU was one. So they had a list of guys. They kind of curated from the from the very beginning, you know, once it became clear they were going to make a change during this regular season, which which frankly wasn't very deep into the season. They were losing on conference record. But this one, they, they actually got to him, got to him sounds wrong. They, they talked to him before his game in Omaha. And I think that was probably intentional because get it out of the way, but also make sure you're first in line, you know, don't let other schools jump in line and you get in their ear first and he thinks about you a little bit. And then if he likes you, well, then he's comparing you to everybody else he may or may not talk to. Um, if he takes the call, if he takes the meeting, it's going to have to clear a certain bar. And I think West Virginia went in strong, you know, the day before they played their first round game in Omaha. So that would have been, you know, Wednesday and they hire him on Sunday. They had some other conversations in person with Byington, Nico Medved from Colorado State. I don't think anybody blew him away quite like DeBreeze did. Do you think that the style will translate pretty well? The fans will like it. I mean, the way that, I mean, you mentioned winning, but the, the kind of style of basketball he plays seems like it's a nice transition, an easier one, a closer one to what Bob Huggins was doing that everybody loved. Yeah, well, they liked the defense when they were pressing, but his offenses were brutal to watch sometimes. And I think that's what will war on people because the way the rules were, the way the recruiting went, this became more and more of an offensive sport. And to, to really zag into defense, uh, to play like a motion offense where you have two bigs on the floor, like they, they had two NBA players in their roster who were like 6'11", uh, and they couldn't make it work. They had they had Derek Colbert, who was, should have been an NBA player, never had his head on right. They had Oscar Sheway, who's in the NBA, and they couldn't make that work. Well, that was a really weird style of basketball. Um, you're looking like four guards or, or three guards and a, a really nimble four nowadays. And that is kind of what DeVries has done. Now, some of that is necessity just because who you can and can't recruit in a place like the NBC, but he still made it work. And what's, what's interesting talking to people that, that, that know him a little bit or have competed against him or who studied him on tape, he does a lot of five out offense. Uh, they're big. This year is pretty good. So that's been different. 
but they're they're stretch guy. They're four. They handle it. And if you're spreading three guards on the floor and you got a big who can handle it, that's going to be unique here for West Virginia. More in line with the Big Twelve. Like in the Big Twelve, your threes and fours are big guys who can move the ball and move with the ball. Uh, that has not been a strong point for West Virginia. They've been undersized or they've been slow in the front court. I think that's going to be a big change and it should open up things offensively. Mike, not only uh, personnel-wise, but just in general, what kind of shape do you feel like the program is in in terms of what he's inheriting? Is everything pretty good to go in terms of NIL and facilities and, and all those types of things? Or is there some some areas of work that's probably on the list of like, hey, put this on, uh, not the demand, so to speak, but the things that we need to check off? Yeah, it's in flux for sure. They don't want for facilities. They have a wonderful practice facility that others would love to have. Their arena is great, 14,000 seats. It's got a whole bunch of modernized renovations. They didn't tear anything down, but they expanded the concourses, the concessions, the restrooms. That's awesome. That's great. Um, women's basketball has spent more in recruiting the past five years than the men's program. Uh, one more that's thing. Not, no, I'm sorry. No, that's that's an odd distinction for a team, um, but like that's going to have to fix. They're going to have to pour money into assistant coaches. They have not paid their assistant coaches very well here, but also because people here are comfortable. Bob Huggins had seven assistant coaches in 16 years, seven. Um, you get five on a team right now. That's going to be a weird thing for people to look at now is that you're going to have new blood, but also a coach is making $250,000, $300,000 worth. The highest salary for an assistant coach here was two hundred before. Yeah, that's, that's well below now the marketplace. Uh, uh, Mike, with what Ren Baker has faced since he arrived, the Huggins story while right off the top, obviously the Neil Brown letting that play out and then giving him an extension. How would you grade him? It seems like he's done a really good job, but how would you grade him yourself watching what he's done and, and kind of what he's had to face? Well, yeah, the, the TBD is obviously the basketball hire, but I think if they got one of the guys that's not the guy they wanted. So the preliminary grade here would be A, of course, right? Because that's what everybody's going to tell you. We'll see. Um, the Brown thing is interesting because that was an odd game of poker. He came in late, didn't really have a choice. You weren't going to hire a great coach while you're learning the job. Um, so he kind of bets on himself and the program a little bit with Brown. And Brown goes out and you know vindicates that with nine wins. The big thing is they redid the contract for Brown and they lowered the salary the first two years and they, they kind of diminished the buyout, which is this huge anchor around West Virginia. Um, to maneuver a contract like that with a coach who is succeeding and thinks he's on the up and up, that's pretty impressive. Um, that's that's kind of like a little bit of wizardry. And then don't forget this too, like they um they hired a men's soccer coach who got their team to the College Cup final this year. That's pretty wild. For college soccer here is kind of a big deal. They transitioned their baseball program. Um, the coach is retiring. They have a pretty good program here, and they kept it in-house. They don't have to go out and get a search. They're using a coach and waiting here from someone who's on the staff. And by the way, their women's basketball program has had three coaches in three years. He just hired one of them who has his team with 25 wins and is in the NCAA tournament tonight against Caitlin Clark in Iowa. That's a ton in one year plus right now. I'm like 16 months so far. He seems like he's checked the boxes for the reason you would hire a guy like him. All right, so uh, what kind of dog? We we have to get the multitasking. If you were writing a column and on the show with us, that's probably normal. Walking your dog while doing the segment with us, what kind of dog and does the dog run the neighborhood? Would you believe I'm running a 5K? <laughs> Uh, it yes. sounds like it, right? No, I'm, yeah. actually, I'm actually in the middle of my afternoon run. I hadn't got it. I was almost done. I couldn't beat the clock, so you guys oh. won that one there. You won the race. Uh, this, is, this, is a beagle. this is a beagle who loves to run but also loves the smell, so it's a bit herky-jerky when we're running. It's a lot of stop and start. Uh, oh, but right, awesome. now she, right now she's got her nose in a, in a pile of uh, sticks and twigs over here that maybe some rabbit or something is in. So she's being, well, she was being quiet. Nope, but, nope, there must be something is. there. You found it. Oh, yep. Bye, Mike. Yep, yep, yep. Great stuff, man. Thanks for being a part of the show and the insight on – uh, DeVries as the new West Virginia men's basketball coach as he's running a 5K yeah. and with his be uh, with his beagle. That's that's about as good as it gets right there. We appreciate him. Yeah, well, it sounds like a really good hire. I know 